Have you or a loved one ever faced discrimination while traveling because of your size? Unfortunately, if you answered yes, it is an all too common experience for plus size travelers. I wanna tell you a story about my loved one experiencing discrimination while traveling as a plus size person. My partner used to go on many trips that were required for business. And this one time, the company had paid for the travel expenses. However, the company only paid for one seat. And even though my fiance felt like one seat was adequate, they could have used extra space, of course. But if they wanted that extra space, they would have had to pay out of pocket. Which so, so whose fault is it? Is it the company's fault? Your husband literally said it was adequate. One seat was adequate was the company supposed to just guess or like presume that he needed more than just one seat and then also why do you even feel like your husband was entitled to two seats wouldn't it be more suitable to just send two people rather than just one person i don't know the circumstance in general but still like why is this a claim here that you face discrimination because your husband needed two seats but didn't disclose that information to the person buying them the two seats it kind of seems like your husband was the person that should have probably voiced that opinion given that given that that they needed the seat why is it why is it the company's fault j bay just has a weird way of victimizing herself and people around her when they're not victims dude you're literally so fat that you require two seats and you're complaining that you didn't get the two seats paid for when most of the time you do get the two seats paid for you because you're flying on like u.s airlines or whatever that shit's called now uh, it, it's just like when i hear these people talk i i resonate them with the i resonate with a little bit right because like if you are disabled you need you do need two seats like i understand it but the fact that j bay does like what i eat a day videos and she sits there, brags about how great it is to be fat, and then also complains that she gets stuck inside of, like, you know, revolving doors or, like, can't walk upstairs anymore or, like, has a hard time going anywhere in life because her fat is literally prohibiting her from doing that stuff. And then says also at the same time that it's beautiful and amazing to be fat. I just don't, like, to me, it just screams, like, you're very entitled and you feel like you just deserve stuff and people should just be able to read your mind, which is really crazy. But... Let's hear the rest of the story. However, the company only paid for one seat. And even though my fiance felt like one seat was adequate, they could have used extra space, of course. Right. But everybody could use extra space, right? Like, I could use extra space. If you were offering me and they said, hey, David, do you want this extra seat for extra space? I'd be like, yeah, bro. What the fuck? Hell yeah, bro. Buy the extra seat. I, I mean, I'm good with just one, but two, 100%. So if your husband told them that it was adequate, what are they supposed to do? Just be like, oh, no, 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 we'll buy you two. But if they wanted that extra space, they would have had to pay out of pocket. Yeah, no shit, which is not, that's obvious. Like, that's an obvious statement, dude. Why would you, why are you expecting it not to be out of pocket? How entitled do you have to be to think that you deserve a free seat, just generally speaking, because you're fat, even though you told people that you didn't need that free seat? Okay. Which was not an option at the time. Sadly, this is a common issue for plus size travel. But it's not even, bro, this has to be a troll, right? There's no way that she's making a video like this and claiming that her husband was victimized because he told the company that he only needed one seat and they gave him the one seat and they were willing to give him two, but he said he only needed one and he felt bad because of that. It might, that'd be like going into a restaurant and going, hey, can I get the tuna sandwich? And they go, are you sure you want the tuna sandwich? There are other options on the menu and better options at that. And he go, nah, give me the tuna. And then when he get the tuna and take a bite and go, I really don't think that I should be eating this right now. It's really fucked up that you made me eat this. It's really fucked up that I would have to pay out of pocket for the next sandwich that is better than this one. Like, why the fuck would you buy the tuna? knowing you could have got the roast beef why did you do that it seems like it's your fault i can't even believe this is even a scenario j bay this is not a, in a scenario of discrimination this is a scenario of i don't know i don't even understand what this is just like you're just to complain just to complain he literally had the option to get a free seat but you said nah they would have had to pay out of pocket which was not an option at the time sadly this is a common issue for plus size travelers paying out of pocket for your own plane ticket is a common issue can you believe that who would have known it's an issue to pay out of pocket for your own plane ticket oh who i can't believe these people are so ridiculous making me pay for my own stuff you know what me too bro next time i go to the grocery store i'm gonna really need somebody to just hop in real quick drop their credit card right on that little tab thing i don't care how much the bill is i deserve it this is a common issue i have i have to pay 100 200 every time i go to the grocery store it's an issue i it's an issue okay i need people to pay for that it's just what it is. It's just what it is. I just deserve it. I deserve it. That's what I'm getting here. 
especially when traveling for business. However, the story only gets worse from oh, here. How, how much worse can it possibly get? It's not even bad here, dude. It's literally like, oh yeah, I told them I needed one, but they, they get, and they gave me one. The day of the trip, my fiance boarded the plane and got settled into their seat. The passenger, who my fiance found out was- Oh my God, dude. They were fat phobic because they didn't want to sit next to somebody. I mean, let's 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 really think about this scenario for a second. You're so fat that the process of sitting in one seat is probably infeasible, which which is probably true. I've seen the size of her husband. He takes up two seats, and she does two, which they can usually sit in three seats if they're traveling together because they both occupy like fifty percent of that one seat, which is really crazy. But whatever. So you have this guy who's occupying one seat when he should occupy two seats and because he's occupying that one seat that means there are two other seats next to him meaning that he's probably intruding on at least one other person unless he's in the middle seat then in that case he's intruding on two other people so she's gonna probably say something like i haven't watched this video by the way she's probably gonna say something like the person sitting next to him was fat phobic because they didn't want to deal with having the extra layers of fat upon her that person touching them when they should have just bought the extra seat or told the company that was giving them the seat to buy an extra seat which the company in her words not mine would have been fully able to do but your husband said the seat was sufficient so I don't even understand. Oh, took myself away. I don't even understand the point of this video. Day of the trip, my fiance boarded the plane and got settled into their seat. The passenger, who my fiance found out was the passenger who was supposed to sit next to them, boarded the flight, took one look up and down at my fiance, and gave them a look of disgust and disappointment. Dude, I, I don't really care. Like, here's the thing. I understand that it might be a little bit like jarring to have somebody look at you and go, "Ugh, god damn, ugh." But, like, simultaneously, what the fuck am I supposed to do about that? Like, I can't control what people think. I can't control how people act. So, what am I supposed to do? You know, if I'm walking down the street and somebody looks at me and goes, Ugh, okay, that's fine, dude. I mean, you could totally think that. The same thing here. I don't give a fuck if you think I look ugly. It's all right. It's completely fine, matter of fact. I think more people should be opinionated on that. Whatever. But what does this have to do with anything? Like, so, you're telling me not only did this guy have to put up with paying for his own seat that he needed... He got a free seat, but he had, he had to put up with sitting in his own seat and somebody that boarded next to him. The dude that was supposed to sit next to him looked at him and was like, that dude is big. I cannot be sitting next to that person. I wouldn't want to sit next to him either, dude. Having to sit next to somebody is already really uncomfortable because you're close to another person you never met before. Obviously, you want to be cordial, but if you're somebody that's very, very big or you have like this major disability that's like literally affecting you negatively, which is like enlargement of fat tissue that's going to be touching another person, yeah, that's going to be uncomfortable given the fact that also I paid the same price as you, which you didn't even pay the price. You literally just got your company to pay for it, which is fine, by the way, um, but it's also like why am I being fucked for something I didn't do? Like you, you decided to become fat and now I have to pay the price for that. Don't you see that that's the issue, J Bay? Instead of like shitting on this one person, I took one look up and down at my fiance and gave them a look of disgust and disappointment. Yeah, and also like I'm gonna, I don't want to say I'm gonna call cap on this, but it's very easy to just say that somebody looked at your husband and was like, <gasps> ugly, not good looking person. Do not want them to sit next to me. Like it's very easy to say that, but in practicality or like what honestly really did happen is probably way different because I've heard this person say some straight up hogwash before, like things that are just like blatantly, obviously untrue. And like that one video I did with her where she said she got stuck in the uh, revolving door or that video she said that she was out of breath and almost fell down because she couldn't walk up steps or stuff like that and like nobody was recording it or... A flight attendant telling her that she was ugly and disgusting and all that stuff. Like, she never recorded any of this stuff. She just says a whole bunch of things that would be very, very inflammatory. And things that would be going viral if she recorded it. Even if she was in the wrong, they would still go viral. But I, I just hear her say so much bullshit on a daily basis that I just kind of go... I don't know what is and what is not true. Maybe this did transpire, but but to what degree, I'm not sure. It could literally have been probably like, maybe he just looked at his husband and was like, Damn, man. Oh, oh, he's getting fucked up. Damn, this dude bit. Or it could have just been like, oh. it could have just been that. And then this person just interpreting it as this person called me a fat ass and I don't like that. It could have just been that. They made some insulting remarks about my fiance's weight right in front of them. And so, bro, I don't. I don't know why these people feel like they're entitled to people being kind to them. Who are you, first of all? Like, all right, look, everybody should be kind to everybody to a certain degree, but you shouldn't expect it. You shouldn't just assume that everybody's going to be nice to you because that's just the way that things should be. 
okay? Like, it's going to be obvious that there are going to be people out there that are going to be assholes or they just don't think that you're entitled to that particular type of privilege. So if you're out here thinking that you deserve to be treated nicely, even though you're literally intruding on that other person's space, which would be given to be like a disrespectful um, comment, right? Dude, so what? I don't give a fuck. Okay, like I, I don't understand why this is even a big deal. Like, oh yeah, I can't believe this person said something mean to my husband. Okay, okay, dude. Somebody called me a humpback seagull like three years ago and I still haven't recovered from it. It's all right, dude. People say mean things to you. Of disgust and disappointment. They made some insulting remarks about my fiance's weight right in front of them and then motioned for the flight attendant to come over immediately. This passenger then proceeded to tell the flight attendant that they refused to sit next to my fiance and definitely insinuated that it was because of their size. Yeah, no shit. What? Of course. If you can get a free seat or you can sit in another place because this person is so fat that it's like implausible to sit next to them, this makes a lot of sense. This, this seems like a, yeah, this seems like an okay thing. What's the problem? What, 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 what is the problem? Your husband should have, like, took the incentive and bought that extra seat if he knew that he was not going to be able to sit in that one seat. As you said, you literally said he needs more space. So why should the other guy have to pick up the tab, not monetarily, well, kind of monetarily, but also physically and being uncomfortable the whole entire flight because your husband wasn't smart enough to buy that extra seat? It just, I just don't understand. And this is, like, so much entitlement because the guy that's doing this Though he may be rude, he's in the right. He's in the right here, dude. But you know, you know the people that are not in the right? These these people. Jay Bay, her husband, not in the right. And yet they feel so entitled to believe that they are correct. And it's like, it's crazy to me because like, how can you be correct in this scenario? You're literally disclosing information that's like crazy. But she still somehow feels like she's right. This behavior is unacceptable and hurtful. Dude, I don't, you know, I really don't care if it's hurtful or whatever, dude. I'm sick of people like... I'm sick of people saying like, oh yeah, I'm empathetic or whatever the fuck. I don't really care. Like, I just want you to do a good job, right? Like, I want the right things to occur. So if you're telling me like, oh yeah, I should feel sorry for this shit. I don't really care. Like, I don't really care that you you got your feelings hurt. Like, tell me, it's like this, right? When somebody asks me, they go, David, if your friend was in a fight, okay? If your friend was in a fight and there was like a whole bunch of dudes that were about to like jump your friend, would you also fight that person that, that's fighting your friend? And my response would be, why are they fighting? Because look, yes, that's my friend. And yes, that's somebody that I care about deeply. But like, dude, tell me why this is happening. Because uh, maybe they deserve to get their ass beat. Maybe they deserve to have that shit happen. Because like, if they said something inflammatory or something transpired or, you know, maybe they did something first. Like, I don't want to get involved in that shit if they did something wrong, right? So, no. Sometimes I'm going to need to know the backstory. The backstory here is literally my husband wanted two seats but told them there was he was good at one and they were going to buy him two but he still said no and he was supposed to buy a second seat but he didn't buy a second seat and because of that the person sitting next to them thought it was disrespectful that that person didn't buy that second seat and still had to sit next to them even though they needed that second seat and they didn't they didn't do anything to get that second seat even though it would have been free. I just fail to see how any of this is that person's fault. I just don't. And I don't really care either that you felt bad. Like, it's whatever. They and definitely insinuated that it was because of their size. This behavior is unacceptable and hurtful and something many plus size passengers have experienced. I don't, I don't care. Like, J-Bay is, is hurt beyond belief and so entitled. So entitled. J-Bay, it's a privilege to live in a place where people are nice to you. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. It's a privilege it's a it's an honest privilege dude to be in a westernized country where you can even get on planes where you weigh the size that you do you can get free plane tickets it's a it's a privilege to fly in general so when you say this shit i'm just thinking like this is so this is such a terrible take that the thought process needed in order to acquire this like this this the transition between your brain cells to create the sentences needed in order to make that sentence viable and come out of your mouth i'm questioning how your brain even thought about that stuff like i'm questioning why your brain didn't have a red flag anywhere in between that and think whoa wait a minute what we just said was really stupid maybe we should rethink it and my fiance thinks about this moment to this day your friend fiance got to get over it then uh what are they thinking about how they fucked up how they then maybe next time they got to make a better decision what the fuck is all right jay bay cool cool your husband's thinking about it whatever dude in the same way you thinking about that bk that mickey d's dude this kind of discrimination happens far it's not discrimination what is the discrimination 
What is the discrimination? Somebody not wanting to sit next to you is not discrimination, dude. That's just a person looking upon you and going, nah, nah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do, I don't want to have to sit next to that person. Why are you using these particular words to describe this event? I get it. You're using these words so that way it makes it seem like it's way, way crazier than it actually is. Which, by the way, all the scenario is headcanon. So, I don't know if it actually did transpire or not. Or if it did transpire, to what degree did it transpire? I don't know. But... It's just very interesting that you would use words like discrimination and like other words that you're using that you know are like, you know, what buzzword bingo to make it seem like your your statements are way, 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 way more valuable when in reality they're not valuable at all. They're just fucking hogwash. But whatever, go off experience. queen. And my fiance thinks about this moment to this day. This kind of discrimination happens far too often to plus size travelers. And that's why I've decided to take action. I started a petition demanding that the FAA protect plus size travelers to ensure that we're never subjected to this kind of treatment ever again. You know, the funny thing is like, if it's personal, if somebody's coming up to you and saying bad things or whatever, you can't do anything about that. I don't understand what you could do because you can't change how other people think and you can't change how other people express those thought patterns. So you could probably change like the, how the TSA does stuff or how like the airline does stuff, but you can't change the individual. That's not how that works. Like if that person just fundamentally dislikes the fact that you're fat or that person thinks that it's un unsanitary to sit next to you or whatever, uh, you can't do anything about that. So what the fuck is this even, what is even this post, dude? What, 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 what is even your claim here? If you want to join me in making a difference, please sign my petition. You can find the link in my bio or right here on the screen. Together, Sad. we can create change and make traveling a better experience for everyone, regardless of their size or abilities. You know, the funny thing about Jay Bay here and like the way she talks about this is that even though she's saying that this is inclusive and it's going to it's going to be positively affecting everybody. I can't help but to think that there's a lot of selfish desire in this. So that way she can get free seats and not have to worry about the price ticket of that seat. And then also like most of the time she talks about this she'll she'll like if somebody calls her out and goes like you're just looking for free seats she's like no 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 i'm looking for the benefit of everybody when in reality it's not the benefit of everybody it's literally just the benefit of her like she's only looking at this as a plus size perspective and what's really interesting though is that um it is predominantly voiced in the spectrum of selfishness like she wants that free seat and she doesn't want anybody to complain about it because if it was if it was just a thing that the government in place what are you even going to do? You can't complain about that shit at that point. And you can't complain to her about it because if you complain to her about it, what are you talking about? Dude? It's the government. Joe Biden did it. For more accessible travel information, plus size travel tips and advocacy, make sure to hit that follow. And then like, I see a lot, a lot oftentimes when people say this bullshit, it's just like, I hear what you're saying, right? But it's almost kind of like when people say we need student, student loan forgiveness, right? The student loan forgiveness argument, which is I want to forgive all these people that took out loans because college loan debt is extraordinarily high and it's a big problem in America. And I agree, it is a big problem in America. Forgiving loans is not the way to actually solve the problem. Given that the problem is still there, you're just basically like wiping off the wound, right? The wound is still going to bleed profusely. The problem is not that people have high debt. It's the problem that the schools cost so much and the getting of the debt is so incredibly easy. That's the problem. So if you go through and wipe all the debt in 2024, by the time it's 2050, it, it, by the time it's 2050, that debt's still going to be there and probably be way, 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 way higher because maybe these schools think that they're going to up the price again because the government's just going to bail them out again, right? So it, there's a lot of like connection there in the sense of like, you do, let's say for instance, you do put this like plus size policy in place. All you're doing is advocating for fat people to stay fat and get fatter to get more and more free shit. So like you're not actually solving the problem, which is like you think the plane the plane seats are small. They're always going to be small. They're always going to make them as small as possible because they're trying to fit as many people in there as possible. So it's like you're not actually solving the problem. All you're doing is like pushing the can down the road. Every time I use a rideshare, I'm forced to ride without a seatbelt because there are no seatbelt extenders. Dude this level of obesity, this pure big back shit is actually insane. Isn't it actually illegal to ride in an automobile without a... Unless you're in New Hampshire. I know in New Hampshire you don't have to. But in most of the states, you have to have a seatbelt. Am I wrong? So the fact that she's saying like, oh, I'm forced to ride without a seatbelt is... Uh, how is that anybody's fault but your own? You're literally endangering yourself and everybody else in the fucking vehicle, bro. Can you imagine like... 
you're doing like uber fucking pool and you see this woman sitting up in the front dude and you're just like oh my god dude if something anything happens remotely this one's rolling back on top of me terrible terrible how is this anybody else's fault but your own and the fact that she has to sit there with this smug ass look on her face look at this shit sitting there you know walking around with these quadruple chins dude talking about oh yeah I, I'm forced to not use a seatbelt, which is illegal. Illegal, bro. I'm forced to ride without a seatbelt because there are no seatbelt extenders. It's time to make it mandatory for ride shares to provide seatbelt extenders. Read the- God damn, bro. You know, when you're this size, right? I, I really feel like you're just making everybody else's life around you way, 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 way harder. Because like normal ride sharing apps or like taxi services or anything like that, even general everyday life, it's not going to be suited for you because you're very fat. So if you know that you're going to be very fat, I would look at it the same way as like somebody that's getting a face tattoo. You know you're never going to work ever again in your life, right? You know you're not going to get a normal job. So what do you do? You make a ton of money in another place so you never have to burden other people with the, the fact that you have so many face tattoos that you're just unsustainable to like actually have a job with. The same thing here. If you're so fat that you know that nothing is going to be sustainable for you, meaning like you're not going to be able to get seatbelt extenders, you're going to have to take up two or three seats at a plane, you're not going to be able to fit in most rooms, you're going to struggle to take showers, you're going to do all these problems, why the fuck are you still making other people have to deal with your shit? Like if you hit up Uber and go, hey, I need a ride, and the dude shows up, and you have to, you didn't even order the XL. You literally just ordered regular Uber, or Uber X or you did the sharing of the ride. You have to now sit there while other people are in the whip with you and you're just big body in that whole fucking thing, bro. And you're going to get, you, oh, can you buckle your seatbelt? Nah, sorry, I can't. That shit's way too fucking, it's light. I can't even pull it over this much anymore. It's your fault. I don't, I can't wear the seatbelt. So now everybody else around you has got to suffer because you want to be big backed. It's time to make it mandatory for ride shares to provide seatbelt extenders. Read the caption for more. Can we talk about how hard it is as a fat person to travel, especially if you're on a self-acceptance journey and you just want to live? What, what the fuck is a self-acceptance journey? Just understanding that you're fat and you don't want to change it? I guess. Like, if you if you don't want to... If you want to be fat, go ahead. But, like, why are you, These people are so incredibly entitled that they're literally looking at it as, like, a... Oh, it's everybody else's job to make my life easy, which is not sustainable in any way because like ultimately if you're externalizing all of your problems and you're putting it all on somebody else, you're that's a bad person behavior. That's a terrible bad person behavior because one, nobody is going to accompany you if that's the case. I mean, granted, you might have some ability to have other people like cater to you in like a very general way, like government state sponsor type shit. So like there's a minimum requirement for taxi services or Ubers and like there's going to be elevators and certain ele uh, accesses and things like that. Sure, those things are in place. But the fact that you're putting so much of your personal life into other people's hands is crazy to me, dude. Like for me personally, right? You guys always know and you people always give me shit too. Like everybody here always gives me shit. But I always wear my shoes inside. And one of the reasons why is because I want to be permanently ready to sprint when needed. I want to know that if I need to, I can leave the house or I can walk down the street or I can go certain places because I have that ability, have my shoes on. And in this case, I can walk. I can get out of the house. I can do other stuff, right? If it was an emergency situation. If you're so fat that none of those none of those things are viable for you anymore, there needs to be a change. And I understand that like if you're disabled, like it's all right, it's okay. Like you're disabled, what can you do? But if you're fat, how has it never crossed your mind that maybe you should make some changes in your life, at least to a degree to where you're autonomous and you don't have to worry about what other people are going to do for you? And instead of that, you can actually do it yourself? I, I, to me, it just it makes no sense. Of your best life. From the seatbelt. Can you, can you imagine somebody saying, dude, get your fucking literally spitting on the fucking microphone, deep throat and I hear her literally talking on the microphone. But how can you say it's living your best life when you're literally so fat? that you have to accept yourself the way that you are because losing weight is such a god damn that forehead wow all right let me stop travel especially if you're on a self-acceptance journey and you just want to live your best life from the seat belts not fitting on planes to getting on tiny little scooters in bali i know it can be so overwhelming to go traveling as a fat big man, person no but fat big person is crazy dude let's talk about seat belts we know we Ooh. 
Blag, 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 blag. You gotta stretch out real far to try to get into that seat. Kind of like, you ever see when polar bears try to cross ice and they just like spread themselves out so the weight can be equally distributed across the ice so they don't fall into the ice? It's like that. Like you're just like trying to spread your weight out as much as you possibly can so that way the person next to you doesn't have to deal with all the extra skin. You just gotta ask for a seat buttocks center. I know it can be super daunting, Damn. but those flight attendants, they just want you to be safe and comfortable. So get out of your comfort zone and ask for that seat belt extender. I always feel insecure about it being around my tummy, but I know it's for my safety. Duh, fucking duh. Seat belts in general are for your fucking safety. Always wear something that you feel comfortable in, something baggy, something you feel like is not gonna hide and cling to your insecurity areas. But yeah. remember- Damn, bro, that guy gotta deal with a lot of weight bro damn how you get a how you get a woman on the back of your bike who's more weight than you and the bike combined always do not let the amount of fat you have on your body stop you from traveling because yeah don't let it like dictate your life i agree like you shouldn't have limitations in this particular degree but it's really really ignorant to assume that none of the weight is going to actually negatively affect you in any way you deserve to live the best True. life no matter how you live, live. your life hashtag be a queen. Don't let anybody dictate you, especially your fat, even though it's literally prohibiting you. As a fat person who sometimes has to travel for work, there are a few things that I have to think about that someone who is not my size would not have to think about. Like the extra fat folds, like the smell, like the girth of the arm. Yeah, that's true. But you know what's really interesting about this stuff? It, 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 these people make it seem like they're saying something like, oh, you know, traveling as a person with no legs really means that I have to worry about things that a person with legs wouldn't have to worry about. I know, but you're not in that situation. You're in a situation where you're fat and you don't have to be that fat and you could just deal with all the other problems that thin people have to deal with. I mean, really think about all the problems that thin people have to deal with when it comes to flying and then stack on or even multiply all those problems by I'm fat. And then those, all those problems are even worse. Or even plan like, for. Like, why would you ever want more problems in your life? Like, life is already a series of an unfortunate event after unfortunate event. And granted, there are some good stuff in there, too. But the point I'm making is, like, there's always something going on that's going to be not optimal. And the fact that you're just making it harder and harder and harder on a daily basis. Why? Why would you want to do that? Just make your life harder? One of those things is the airline I'm going to travel on. If I am not traveling first class or business class, I only want to travel on Southwest. And that shit is big as fuck. You guys saw that shit? The reason for that is because of their customer. Damn. Damn. Damn, bro. What is that, bro? You go to Bed Bath & Beyond to get that? What is that, dude? Shower curtain. Size policy. This policy states that if you book an extra seat, even if the flight was oversold, they will be And you know what's really crazy too is like because they have more clothes but not actual they have more clothes in the sense of like the clothes that they have are more clothed but it, they can't fit more clothes. Like for instance, one of their shirts would be the equivalent of like three of mine. So I can pack three shirts whereas they can pack one and they would probably consider that to be like a fat tax because the maximum amount of weight that you can hold on a carry, like on a uh, thing that you can have on your plane, right? With like the, the luggage would be like what, 50 pounds or something like that. So that means that they're gonna hit that 50 pounds before you're gonna hit that 50 pounds based off the amount of clothes that they're able to put inside of their luggage. So they're working with limited clothes and they already don't have a lot of options in general with clothes because they always complain about that shit. But the fact that they're sitting here still going through these problems, it's just its just very interesting for me. Fund it afterwards. They will also accommodate you with an extra seat without you booking it in advance if you go up to the ticket counter the day of your flight. It's just a gamble too though, because like if you're going up to them and the uh, American Airlines and you're going like, I need a free seat because I'm fat. By the way, the entitlement's crazy as fuck to be that fat and need an extra seat is insane. But whatever, um, what if the flight is just overbooked? What if you're just going to a particular seat and you think, oh, I deserve this free seat? And they go, ooh, sorry. Yeah, there's like no free seats. So even though you're like fat as shit and you can't fit in two seats, sorry, you can't fit in one seat. We literally cannot do that. Like, do they ever suffer the consequences of their own actions on that, that particular case? It's got to happen a lot, right? Like if you go up there thinking that you're going to be able to get a free seat, but that just, that the free seat just doesn't exist because why the fuck would it exist when it's a booked flight? This provides comfort for you and other passengers. Yeah, but the comfort that you're talking about is like, most people are willing to sacrifice some comfort for the price of the seat. So when you say like, oh, it's gonna be better for both parties, you're just getting free shit. You know that? You're just getting like more than me. 
and I'm being punished for that because I still have to pick up that price for the ticket. Another thing you know what I'm talking about? Like she's picking up two prices. She's picking up two plane tickets and one of them is free and you're sitting there sucking in your basic plebeian seat looking over at her big as hell getting those pretzels sucking down that diet coca-cola while looking at you a plebeian she's spread out dude she got her legs on a seat she looking at you going like this you know because you she got the free seat and she's getting more treatment than you even though probably uh you deserve it more since you're thinner thing that i like about southwest as a fat person is that your seats are not assigned ahead of time and the reason i like this is because i'm very self-conscious so i want the person who's sitting next to me to know that they're sitting next to a fat person Crazy. and not to get there and be like oh i chose the wrong seat so i try to get an early boarding position so it is the person choosing to sit next to me if i do not have that extra seat and when i'm traveling as a fat person it isn't just the airline i have to think about it's also the suitcase when you are a bigger person, your clothes do take up. That's exactly what I was saying before. I didn't pre-watch this video, but this makes a lot of sense. You're not going to be able to fit as many clothes in the bag as you would have if you were thinner. But unfortunately, I still have to try to fit it into a carry-on suitcase. And the reason I do this is because if I check a bag and the airline loses my suitcase, it is not easy for me to find additional clothes. It's just like you guys are literally living your life on hard mode anytime you do anything at all. And... I understand that you guys want to be like, oh, you know, it's beautiful to be fat and things like that. But why are you so fat that you can't find clothes? Why are you so fat that you're dedicating your life to like having that free seat or uh, trying to call up establishments and seeing if their structural capacity for their chairs are enough for you? None of these things seem viable in any way for a normal person. But the fact that you guys are just like, okay with doing this stuff on what seems to be a daily basis. Why do you put up with this? Like, it just doesn't make sense. So even here where I am going on a five day work trip, I am packing as lightly as I can with minimal shoes, dresses instead of business suits, avoiding the heavy business jackets so I can fit as much in as possible. Just basically you can't bring everything you want or that additional pair of cute shoes. If you're a fat person who travels for work too or just travels on a plane in general, what are your tips? What are your tricks? Be, be thinner. <laughs> Make yourself more company to society. Why are you so fat all the time? Honestly, no matter how many times I travel on a plane as a fat person, I still get anxiety each and every time. Yeah, no shit. You're in a tube flying above the fucking sky at a million miles per hour. It's going to be anxiety for anybody. Especially now flying on Boeing. So I can't sit here because I'm overweight? Just because of the extender. You can, uh, you said without the extender, you want to walk the same thing. So I was trying to put the seatbelt on without the extender. With the extender, it was only four inches away from the buckle itself. That was me measuring my purse because my purse is really small. She never acknowledged me at all. Everyone was asking my friend at the end of the plane what had happened, and they were so disgusted on how it went down. By the time the flight was over- Wait, so the issue was that she didn't use the seatbelt extender? And that they, they had an issue with that because she wasn't buckled in? Okay, what do you mean people were upset? What is that? After, why the fuck weren't you buckled in properly? What's the point of asking for a seatbelt extender if you weren't going to use it? You literally said that it was not surrounding your body and you couldn't buckle it. So what the fuck? Am I missing something? I didn't even want to see this one's face. I was so livid on how they even handled this. What? They seem like they handled it pretty well. So glad that you asked this question. It seems like this topic kind of- I'm about to book a flight to Portugal. I'd love some advice on being a larger lady on American services Airlines. Services every few months. So I have some scattered videos about it, but- Ameri The fact that you need a tutorial on this shit is actually insane, bro. Like, it's not like you're doing a walkthrough on like a video game mission or something like that, dude. No, like this is like really crazy. Like you're fat and you need some tips, some tips and trips, some tidbits to try to get some insight on how to travel as a fat person when you could just not be fat. Now I get it, like it's not easy to become not fat, especially if you're about to take a plane ticket. So like maybe it's good to get the information right away, but a lot of these issues could simply be not there if you just decided to lose weight. American Airlines is actually the airline that I use the most frequently when I was traveling for my job for the better part of a year, right up until uh, a month before lockdown happened in 2020. But my favorite, things to do before I booked a flight was using Seat Guru. They used to have an app. Now it's not available for download anymore. I double checked that. 
one of the previous times I talked about this, but they do have a website. So if you're looking at certain flights, you can compare the size of the seats on. Man, the, these issues just should not be things. Like, can you imagine sitting there and going through to see what seats are big enough for your bust or your butt size? Because the other seats just may not be viable for you to sit down in or they're just so monstrously uncomfortable that you may not be able to properly indulge in that seat for a, a good amount of time. I just, for me, I just could not believe I could not be in a body so incredibly inefficient in almost everything that you do and and then still complain about it and then also say that your body's amazing and then have to put up with all these issues. Like these, the fact that they have to go through this stuff, like I don't wanna have to deal with it, right? Like I know a lot of people say, for instance, they say like, oh, black guys um season their food there's a lot of guys in general that don't season their food because they just can't be bothered with it like it's just like oh it's too much work or it's too much effort and i just kind of want to get it done and then that's it like i'll just eat my food for the for the moment and then that's it and that's like me trying to get as much things as done as possible like in a very exponential way these people are literally like living life perpetually having problems over and over and over again the same problems and it's just like normal for them you know what i'm talking about like they're just okay with having the extra steps and doing more and having more problems like that to me I wouldn't want to deal with that. Like sometimes I'm just like, I, you know, let's just do this and that's it. Like, I don't want to do anything more than this. On those particular aircrafts, because they do vary. Um, and so you can see if you maybe might get, you know, an extra inch or two on one flight Crazy. that's leaving an hour later versus another flight. So an extra inch or two, bro. I mean, if that's the real deal breaker, bro, well, you know, I, you know, for me, I've never had a problem with the inches, but for a lot of people, like, I can see that if you're a bigger person, an inch might make the difference between, like, really good comfortability and not so good comfortability. An inch is a lot for a lot of people. I mean, not for me, but, you know, I'm talking about. But it's it's just crazy to me that you're still dealing with these problems when you could just not have to deal with them. So that site is extremely helpful if you're concerned about seat size and also seat pitch, which is the length that you will have in between your seat and the one in front Crazy, of you. Bro. So like too much, got too much knee, too, too much knee girth. Room. My next tip is to join some groups on Facebook. If you have access to Facebook, get some friends on Facebook to talk about your problems with how big you are. By the way, this makeup is not it. I'm sorry to say it though. This makeup is really not it. It's terrible. I don't even, what do you have hanging from your, from your neck here? What is this? A, uh, some kind of cloth, like some kind of like, what is, what is this like a silkworm what is going on and why are your nails so monstrously inconsistent like they're all vastly different sizes like you cut this nail last week but this nail is still going from three weeks ago because that was where i actually got a lot of my information before i started flying the group that i was in is called flying wall fat i think there's another one that someone just mentioned in my comment that was called like if it fits i sits <laughs> that's what cats that's the that's the thing that cats do if it fits it sits that's what cats do man but uh sure i mean they're they're cool punny like names for your stuff but it's like it doesn't change the fact that you literally have to go to a facebook group chat to figure out whether or not you're too fat and then you're gonna like have conversations with other fat people about how disgusting it is that you can't fit in seats anymore and it should be up to the airline to distribute you good seats because you're so fat something similar to that you can go through the comments if you go back uh, on the linked video and find that. But there's a wealth of information, people talking about what size they are, Crazy. Um, where they have traveled. It sounds depressing. Like it, it just sounds like a whole bunch of fat people just talking about how depressed they are that they can't fit in seats anymore and that they need to go on particular apps or establishments to try to figure out what seats are good for them. If they can get an extra inch somewhere, whether or not they're gonna fit in the bathrooms. Like it just doesn't seem like something I would wanna deal with. And the fact that these people are just okay with living like this, it just hurts me deeply because it's not something you do have to deal with. This stuff can literally just be alleviated within a few months of diet and exercise, but they perpetually just have lives like this. Like they're just okay with this shit. What airlines they have used. It is honestly fantastic. People go everywhere and discuss this stuff. It's very helpful. True. And then the last thing would just be to, you know, be aware that you may need a seatbelt extender. I needed one at the time. I was like a pretty solid size 24 pants. Damn, damn. Now I'm more so a 26. Damn. Um, but I just needed it usually for like a couple extra inches. A so couple extra inches is a lot, bro. What are you talking about?
dude, we're, we're literally talking about like one or two extra inches being a lot. And you're literally going like, but you know, it's only a couple extra inches. That's a fuck ton of what, that's a lot of extra fucking space you need because of that shit. And you're acting like it's just nothing. Like it's normal. So again, I don't know what size you are, but that's Boig. something that you want to keep in mind. I usually asked for it right before I got on the flight, but through these videos that I have made previously, I have learned that you can ask to pre-board, which I have not done, but it was advice given to me, if you need a seat belt extender. And you can actually also ask the uh, attendant, like when you get to the gate, if it can, I guess, be put at your seat prior to you boarding. Sad, I didn't know bro. you could do either of those things when I was doing it. I would just, as soon as I got on the plane, I would ask for it. It's just sad, like living your life like this and choosing to live your life like this, because make no mistake about it, this is like a choice. This is something these people want to do. Even though as much as they want to sit there and complain that it's not like them and it's like society doing it to them, it's not, it's them. They're deciding to eat more. Living in a society where food is very, very accessible, they're choosing to indulge more than me and you. And they're doing it consistently enough to become fat to so fat to where they need an extra seat or a seatbelt extender. And don't get me wrong, it's fine if you need an extra seat. It's fine if you need a seatbelt extender. I just hope that you can pay for those things or like ask for them adequately timed and like actually utilize these things. Like I'm not here. I'm not, a, I'm not an asshole. Like I understand that people need crutches. It's fine. But these people are setting themselves up with their own crutches and then complaining that they exist. It's just, it, to me, I just cannot believe that we live in a world so successful that these are even options to begin with. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. So if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you could do any of that stuff for me, I would appreciate it. It helps me grow in the algorithm, any little bit of an interaction. So that's great if you could do any of that stuff. Uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody that's a subscriber or a member. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in tree. Or if there's a tree emoji, you can go ahead and type that in there too. Um, however you want to display the trees in the comment section, I am DTF for any of those things because I love trees regardless. I mean, I don't love them enough to like have sex with them, but I love them enough to breathe my oxygen on them and tell them that they're delicate, beautiful, and amazing. Kind of like you. Kind of like how amazing and beautiful and amazing you are. You smell great. You are great. I mean, you're not as, you know, you're not like a tree, but you're more than that. You're way more than that. You're dynamic. You can make decisions on the fly and you know how to navigate reality in a good way, in an optimal way. Even if you don't have a mustache, I still appreciate you, but I might appreciate you a little bit more if you did have a mustache, but it's okay that you don't. It's fine. It's honestly fine. It's okay. You have some facial hair, right? Somewhere, somewhere on there. Those fine hairs, they count. I will accept you within our mustache club. Anyway, you're beautiful. You're amazing. I appreciate you. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, my Twitter, my Discord. All that stuff will be linked down below in the description. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.